Hello everyone, Russell Aquamax here. Just opened my uh, garter enclosure. This is of course a temporary enclosure and I've removed some of the decor and the water dish and so on just for ease of filming. I'm going to be feeding these guys uh, a little later. Unfortunately, that's not going to be part of the live stream because I'm doing a photo shoot of that for another project. But uh, I wanted to just kind of get an update. I do need to actually replace their paper towel for the day. I haven't done that yet today. So I'm going to do that because it's a little messy. It's not too bad. Um, they're really bad soonest after they digest their food sometimes, but that's not too bad there. And I'll replace that in a little while. But let's take a look at them. They're growing. They're doing well. Looking good. Some eggs, mango juice 472 and my Nala 110 all in the house. Nice to see you here. Hopefully you can hear me well. Now, this is kind of a funny thing I'd like to mention. The last time I had these snakes on a live stream, I was trying to feed them and I hadn't scented the new food. And so they weren't terribly excited about it. But since then, I've gotten them to really accept the new food, just scented it with a little bit of uh, earthworms and they totally go after it now. They're also pretty uh, good at not being jumpy. They're, they don't really like to be approached from the top, which makes sense for a tiny little snake, but uh, as soon as I pick them up, they're perfectly comfortable. And we'll go around in my hand and often crawl right into my hand looking for food. Especially if they smell and I'm feeding another one. I don't feed them in the same enclosure, of course, because then they could accidentally eat each other. But look at that color. It's starting to come in pretty nicely. You can see that red. I can even see it, which is nice because I'm partially colorblind and not quite as sensitive to red as some other people. But if I can see that, you must be able to see it pretty well. So that's exciting. All right, Austin is in the house and so is Ian Alicia Perry. Nice to see you all here today. It looks like we've got 10 people in the house, sweet. So, hopefully you can see this little guy fairly well. Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. I still get a little bit freaked out sometimes, but there you go. Um, yes, happy Halloween coming tomorrow. Uh, that's pretty exciting. We're going to go visit family for Halloween. Oh, look at that. Yes. So make it, Kate, you can see the red. Nice. So I'm not making it up. Sometimes I'm worried because I'm partially colorblind. I make stuff up, but you can already see the red. So that is great. And this is the little guy. This is Houdini. Um, I call him Houdini because he's the one that escaped and, and showed up again. Um, Let's see. Oh, he's kind of freaking out. I'm trying to move him around a little bit. But uh, let's see. Who else is in the house? Scott H., your first live. Nice. Glad that you could make it this time. And Krista, hello and welcome. Austin, you got Porcelio bolivari. That's quite an interesting species. Those are really bizarre looking. If there's a species that's contender for... Uh, a trilobite look-alike. I think that's one of them. Um, let's see. All right. So Wally's seeing the red too. Cool. And thanks, Evan. And happy Halloween to you too. Andrew Ewald. And yeah, even the little one's red. Let's take a look at one of the big ones and see what we get, huh? I want to see what they look like. Uh, close up. So it might take me a a little while to coax one up without food. It's really, really funny to see them crawl into my hand when they know there's food. They're just really excited about it. I think they have a lot of potential that way to just train them eventually to crawl up into my hand for food. But you can see this one's a little skittish right now, picking it up, but it'll come right down. All right, how's she looking? Or I think, is this the she? I think sometimes the bigger male and female have a hard time telling apart, but how's that looking? How's the color on this one? Oh, my, uh, okay. Mickey M, awesome. You are in the house. Nice to see you again. It's been a while since you've been able to catch a live stream and I always appreciate it when you're here. The Shrimpsons, excellent. And thank you, Mickey. We'll get some more likes up there. We've got 19 in the house and only five likes, so let's get some more. Um, let's see. 
The Shrimpsons caught some isopods. Awesome. What kind of they are? Are they? Yeah, they're really, really growing fast. Each of them have shed once. Ooh, I, I think that red looks pretty sweet there. That's what I'm going to say. It's pretty awesome. Um, I think they've each shed once. Or maybe one of them did twice. I'm not sure about that. Um, Roachant, hello. Nice. Yeah, they totally, they're totally come once I pick them up. Getting them there, a little tricky. But I'm just digging that. I could just sit in there and watch my own live stream because the snake is so gorgeous, even when it's this little. I probably shouldn't do that, though, because I don't want to neglect the chat. It's just that color is pretty fantastic. Um, Mango Juice 472, thank you for the super chat. That is awesome. Um, my favorite snake. What is my favorite snake? Oh, it's so hard to say. Um, right now I have two species of snake and they're both my favorite right now, but there are others that I would totally be excited about keeping. I love um, Mexican black king snake. I once worked with, in a professional capacity, worked with an eastern indigo snake. And it was absolutely gorgeous. Loved that snake. Not just because it was beautiful, but its personality was amazing too. And so of all the snakes I've worked with, uh, in a professional capacity, I would say that uh, the eastern indigo snake is my favorite. But um, I really love garters, obviously. I really love uh, corn snakes, Mexican black, black king snakes, big on my list. Milk snakes uh, are, are amazing. Um, I, I love milk snakes. I would, wouldn't mind keeping milk snakes someday. And uh, I don't know, that uh, super dwarf Burmese python that I met at the expo that's in one of my videos, that thing I just, my jaw dropped and I, I couldn't take my eyes off it. That was amazing. So I wouldn't mind doing one of those someday because they're a lot smaller than you know, the uh, other Burmese pythons that are awesome, but also way too big for me to ever keep. Um, so let's see, we got questions from Wally and Make It Kate that are related. What am I feeding? Well, I'm still feeding earthworms. I'm still feeding uh, sliced pinkies, frozen thawed off, obviously. And then um, I am feeding the prepared food, the reptilinks as well, and it's working really well. I just uh, rub some worm on it and they go after it gulp it right down. So it's awesome. Um, so mango juice, I hope that answers your question. It's a really difficult question, but I gave you some specific answers as specific as I could. So hopefully that, that did it for you. I really appreciate the super chat again. Um, so yeah, Heather Jensen's in the house and aren't they gorgeous though? I'm just amazed by them. RJ Robinson, nice to see you here. Um, yeah. Make it Kate. Cold Budded Creations has some amazing milk snakes recently. Cool. I, I just love their colors. They're just incredible. Um, so, Jay's Crazy Obsession didn't get a notification, huh? I'm glad you showed up anyway. Yeah, this, this is... I don't know why these guys are so calm. I find that the garters, you hold them for a minute and they calm down. Even the wild ones? And when I was a kid, I used to catch the wild ones and you just pick them up and hold them for like 20 minutes. And they're just like, oh, OK, I, I accept all this. This is fine. You can hold me and be totally calm. That's been my experience anyway I, with the wandering garters that we find around here. I don't know if that's true for probably not true for all garters, but what I've seen. Supreme Gecko, you're not allowed to bring a snake in the house. You're allowed to bring roaches in the house, but not snakes. See, there you go. I'm the opposite way. We can have snakes, but not roaches. So I'm sorry for that. But hog noses are awesome. Um, how do you feel about the smaller snakes like sand boas and little hog noses? I, I think they're amazing. And I love the fact that some of the smaller snakes, like the, uh, the little canyon sand boas or like a male hog nose, you could keep it in a, a really small container, like equivalent of a 10 gallon tank without causing any problems. I love that fact. So, uh, you know, with a female hog nose, they're a little bigger. You probably want to keep them in a bigger enclosure, but not, uh, either a male wouldn't necessarily need it. So. I love that. Snakes for small uh, accommodations, you know, someone who doesn't have a lot of space but they want a snake, I think that's cool. So garters, they're super active and they need a little bit more space, so I would not really want to put a garter in a 10 gallon, even though they're not huge snakes. These guys are going in a 40 gallon breeder when they get bigger, so. Um, let's see. 
trying to catch up folks. Thank you, HC Aqua. How's this one? I think this one, to me, it looks like the red's not showing up quite as much as the other two, but tell me what you think. Maybe it's just the way I see it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, and good, mango juice. I, I'm glad that worked for you. Evan Bullcow just ordered some D. I don't know how to say this. I've read it a million times. It's a beetle. Titius or something. And Gymnestis Thula. That species I'm not familiar with. The Dynasties to Titius I am. Um, I can't wait to see them. Have you, have you kept any flower or rhino beetles? I have not. Um, but I think they're fantastic looking beetles. And the bug presentations I do from time to time, those would be fantastic for that. And I know there's been some deregulation recently that makes some of those beetles a lot easier to keep in the U.S. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so I may do that in the future. So, well, I'm glad Jay's Crazy Obsession. It's nice that I can make your Wednesday a little more fun. Um, okay, Ian Alicia Perry. These are California, um, California red-sided garters. The scientific name is Thamnophis. I want to make sure I get it right. I think it's Thamnos Thamnophis parietalis infernalis. So it's a subspecies. Um, and I think that's the right one. Hopefully so. Oh, hold on. Sorry. I'm going to have to move so the snake doesn't fall. Um, okay. And... Okay, there you go. So... Um, Rotant, the garters in my ear are very similar to the red-sided, but the red is a straight red, not checkered. Interesting. Um, where are you from? That sounds like an intriguing species there. Um, yes, board goat. I used to catch them in Washington as a kid, and I, my first one, though, I think I actually caught here in my home state when I was visiting it at the time. Um, when I was about six, I caught a wandering garter. Um, so, this... These get to be about, the females top up, they top out at about three feet long-ish, and the males are smaller. So the males might be 18, 20 inches long, something like that. Where are you going? Um, so, can you show us your duckies or titans before the video is over? Just want to look at your setups for reference if you get time. Let's, let's see if we can make that happen. I wonder if, Gwen, would you be willing to go grab the titans and bring them in here? Um, it's going to be a little bit harder to see that I'll have to dig a lot if I get into the rubber duckies. Just, um, but it might be harder for her to find them too. They're labeled as Porcelio Huffman's egg eye. And they're in a bigger bin. If you could do that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, the red's showing up better for me now on this one. Um, let's see. RJ Robinson, have you ever kept assassin bugs? I have not, but I know a guy who um, breeds the Horrid Kings. He lives close to here. And uh, we've done, like, the same guy who went with me on the rubber duckies, and we've done some other things together. Um, he's got some pretty cool things going on. He has a breeding colony of the Horrid Kings. I think they would be really cool for my bug presentations, not for handling, obviously, but um, for demonstration purposes. So I... <coughs> <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, everybody. I might get some at some point. Um, so Rotan is in Montreal, Quebec. Cool. Wow. If you could get a population of those in the hobby, of the, your local um, type, that would be really cool. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. So your friend have a channel too. Um, he has a Facebook page and a website. I think the the Facebook page is shoot. Trying to remember. Um, you can find him as Ray Trip, R A Y T R I P P, on Facebook. Um, he's got Mainstream Exotics, was the name of his place, but he's kind of open, going with a new name and it's uh, Bug Eaters. So I'm not sure what, what state the websites and stuff are in. I think he's got maybe a website for both of them. But um, we're going to be doing a collaboration video at some point. We've been talking about it for a while, we just haven't gotten to it. But at that point, I'll make sure I get all the information so you can contact him. Um, as, uh, okay, Mike, what kind of presentations do you do? Generally, I do um, presentations on invertebrates. A lot of them are with the youth camps at the university. Um, but sometimes they're just like, some. there was a community that contacted me and said, can you come do one and different things like that. But a lot of times I do them for the university with their youth camps. 
uh, it's kind of an elective and it's super fun. And there are really strict rules about vertebrates with university and if you're being paid at the university to do things with vertebrates, they're really, really strict about how that works. And so, um, but they're, they don't regulate verte invertebrates, so it's easier not to have the red tape involved. So that's how I do that. Thank you, Gwen, for bringing those. Um, and Ian and Alicia Perry, I'm glad that you uh, were able to jump in. I hope to see you next time. And Scott H., how are rubber duckies legal to important to the U.S.? I have not dealt with importation of foreign isopods, so I'm not the best person to ask about that. I have dealt with intrastate or interstate transport of them, and that is fairly straightforward if you get the permit these days. But um, that's how it works, I guess. Oh, that's true. Make it Kate. I think I've seen that you were his friend, so you already know about him. Yeah. So I don't really know a lot about it, but I do know you need to get a separate import permit, I'm pretty sure in addition to the um, permit to keep them and to transport them that I have. And I don't have the one to export or to import from out of the country. So Heather Jensen, I've been of animal skulls that are left out to wild insects to clean for me. I did not, not see any dermestids, but I saw a bunch of isopods in there last weekend. Yeah, they'll definitely get into that. That's awesome. Okay. Chevy fish. Have you ever kept a brown decay? They are my fave. You can rub their underneath scales backwards and it won't catch. They're very smooth. Houdini, very appropriate name for your found escape, escapee. Yeah. So we've got, we've got, uh, this is, we've got Ruby and Rufus McDanger Noodle. This is Rufus McDanger Noodle in my hand right here. And then Ruby is the, the largest one, the female. And then the smallest one is Houdini because he escaped. Uh, I don't know. I'll keep this one in my hand for a minute. So have you ever kept a brown decay? I have not kept that kind of snake. They don't have them in my area. <coughs> Excuse me. I've seen them on, on videos. I saw Snake Discovery's video on them a month or two ago. It was really cool. She, she had like a, a group of four of them that she was hand feeding little worms to and they're, they're so minuscule, a lot smaller than even these guys and really cute, really cute snakes. But I haven't kept them. Um, all right. So I'm going to switch over in just a second to the ice pods, but I'm going to try to catch up on the chat and then I'll do that. And then maybe we'll do some more snakes or I don't know what we'll do. I can't really feel, I'm hesitant to get um, Mr. Skeletal or Corn Snake out like I usually do for live streams because he uh, is just about to shed any day now. So I don't really want to bother him. He was in blue a couple days ago, just cleared up. And uh, so any day he's going to going to shed. He sh cleared up a day or two ago. So, Roachant or isopods, seasonal breeders. I find mine don't breed during winter even if I keep them warm. Some species seem to be a little bit more like that and wild caught ones seem to be more like that. It seems like there's some selectivity going on in captive populations that uh, makes them less seasonal breeders from what I've read a little bit about that. I don't know a ton about it, but it also depends on the species of course. Some, some species just don't care. They'll breed all the time. Doesn't matter what you do with them. Um, but there you go. Um, I feel like mine don't really, I don't notice any difference in mine, although the wild caught um, yellows, high yellows that I've been working with for a while, just didn't breed nearly as much as the others for a good bit of time. So, um, yeah. Uh, most of mine don't seem to, to, to mind. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't try to cover my mouth with a snake in my hand. And I... <laughs> sorry. Coughing, coughing on cue here, sorry. <laughs> Had some irritated bronchial tubes for a couple months, and it's pretty awful. So I'm not, like, I don't have anything contagious or anything like that. Um, but anyway, yeah. How are the P. magnificus doing? I still don't see any man in my colony, also from the isopod chick. Yeah, they, I've got those group of monkeys. I should check on them again. I, it's been a couple of days since I've checked on them, but they're doing um, doing well as far as I know. Last time I checked on them, they are doing great. Okay, I don't think there are going to be very many under here. There's some, a few babies, and a couple of close to mature ones. Oh, and there's a pesky little giant orange that got in there. There's some down there. I think most of them are going to be under here, though. This is where a lot of them hang out. Oh, they're all covered up with leaves. But you can see here. You try to move these. 
I'm getting some males that are almost um, to full size now. I don't see any right here. They're probably all on the bottom. But notice the two colors. Um, isn't that funny? There's like some chocolatey ones and then some really like slate gray ones. Isn't that funky? I don't know what's going on with that. That's like a morph thing. I've heard there are a couple of really cool morphs of Titans or Huffman's Egg Eye that are out there that I have never seen in real life. There's a male that's putting some size on it. I'm going to see if I can dig around and find a nice big male for you or a couple of them. See, there's a, let's look at this. This is kind of fun. These are getting there. They're not mature yet, but I mean, they're, I'm sure breeding size already, but look at the difference in the colors in these two. It's obviously not the lighting. Um, I'm really curious about this. Um, because I don't hear a lot about this. I just lost a Titan to the floor. Oh no, let me figure out what's going on. Um, yeah, that would be great, Gwen, if you can help me track him down. He may be on top of this shipping bin here, or he may be took a dive onto the ground and is crawling around the edge of the bin or something. If you can just look around for a second. I don't want to lose a Titan. Thank you, Make It Kate, for the heads up on that. Um, titan fall, love it. Um, okay, Gwen is on Titan recollection duty. Um, anyway, there we go. So, Austin, um, glad you like them. They, they're pretty cool. And like I said, these aren't fully grown yet, but they're, they're putting some size on. Um, and how do I feel about ram's horn snails? Ram's horn snails, I have kept ram's horn snails for years and years. I don't think I have any at present, but I've kept them. I like them. And I've had, uh, them get to plague proportions in tanks on occasion, depending on, you know, the situation. I find that the, usually if you don't overfeed your tank, you're not going to have problems with ram's horn snails. Or if you get an assassin snail, you won't. But I found that the biggest problem I had was when I was raising bristlenose placos and the babies. Seeing anybody down there? No. Um, do you want to scoot the, the shipping container out of the way and we'll see what we got? Sorry, everybody. We're kind of jiggling around looking for this, this Titan that took off. It may actually be under the Titan container and on top of the shipping container. If you want to lift that up and see if it's there. Sorry, I, I'm really excited to look at my fingers while we're doing this. Didn't crawl under the paper towel or anything, huh? No. Well, we'll just keep an eye out and see if it, we just... On the edges of it? We'll keep an eye on the floor and just see if it crawls around. Um, closer to the camera, they're saying. Fell closer to the camera. So over here, and I'm... I don't know. We'll just keep an eye out on this side of things and see what we get. Yeah. Okay. And Heather Jensen, have you heard about the purple ivory millipedes? Purple ivories coming from oh, somewhere other than Florida. Well, the young ones are often, often have a purple cast. And I've heard a little bit about it, but I've never been able to determine if there's actually a morph or if people are just selling baby purple ones and calling them a morph or, you know, or if there's actually a morph that retains that purpleness into adulthood. It would be fascinating if they do, so that's cool. Um, okay, well, we'll keep a look. Oh, they like your socks, Gwen, by the way. Oh. Yeah, who, who said? Scott likes your socks, and Austin says thanks for getting the Titans out. Look at that from the side. Isn't that a cool view? I love that. They look like they're crawling like that. Um, so Porcelios will usually not breed with other Porcelios. As far as I've been able to determine, they're... Except if it's the same species. I mean, you know, different morphs will interbreed in some cases, but um, you can't interbreed two species of Porcellias as far as I know. I've never heard of it happening, and so I don't think it happens. Rufus McDanger Noodles for a snake name sounds like a name my wife would choose. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've always liked that name for some reason when I first thought of it for a snake a year or so ago, and I wanted to name a snake that, so I saved it up to name uh, one of the red-sided garters. And it works because Rufus is a term meaning red. So it works perfectly. All of their snakes were going to have a name relating to the term red. And then uh, we decided not to do that because um, Houdini escaped. And so the other two have red names and he doesn't. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, what was the thing about the Placos? It was just that my Placos, when I was breeding them, here, I'm going to move over a little bit here, put these guys down, maybe, and we're going to do that. 
So you can check those out. This is what my setup looks like. I can't remember who asked, but hopefully this helps. Was it Austin? So you can see the setup. I like the big sheets of cork bark for him. So, um, yeah, that's what I was talking about, that the um, Placos, when I'm breeding the ram's horn snails with the Placos, the Placos, uh, the ram's horn snails would really go nuts because the kinds of foods that I need to offer the baby Placos, and you need to feed them a lot when they're little and growing like crazy if you want them to do well, um, are the exact same foods that the ram's horns thrive on. So, that's when I'm, uh, it was really hard not to keep them from going to plague proportions, but I really like them. They're fun snails. And, yes. So, Austin, yes, um, like any of the big, like, Spanish porcelios, I don't think they'll cross either, uh, as far as I know. So, Mickey M said, my tights are all very dark. I did find an orange one. I think it was a brickwork. It was exciting after I saw the video when you first found an orange one. I was hoping it was a thing. I was too. I've seen one on a video or a picture or something, but it was in Europe. Somebody had one. Um, but mine were just little Spanish orange porcelias that got in there. The scabbers. So, um, yes. Um, okay. Evan just said he rewound the video and the Titan seemed to just fall back into the container, which is good news. Um, if that's what happened, and that would explain why I can't find it. Um, we'll double check the, under the shipping container, and I'm kind of keeping an eye on the floor just in case it, it shows up, but that would be good news. Um, so, Pup314, have you ever kept freshwater mussels and clams in your fish tanks? I have not. I've been intrigued by that idea. Uh, I have like all kinds of mollusks and so on, so that sounds like cool idea. I have kept some bivalve mollusks in salt water. We had a tank in Hawaii when we lived there that was just a let's go collect tide pool animals and put them in and little bits of live rock and see what happens kind of thing while we lived there and that was fun. And we did have some clams and things like that in there. But that was a saltwater tank of course. Jay's Crazy Obsessions and Sister are my f and Sistress are my favorite things on the planet. So like bristlenose placos for those of you who are not familiar with this scientific name. And they are awesome fish. I love them. I've had calicos, normals, and albinos. Oh, that one took a dive, but it landed in the right place. So that's good. Um, so they're super cool. They're really fun catfish to work with. And I can see why they would be your favorite, because they're one of my favorite, uh, like, bottom dwelling fish. Um, so shadow... Blazer XZ. Do you ever plan to obtain rubber ducky isopods? I do. I have a video on it, in fact, when I unbox them, and they are in a couple of my live streams. They're not breeding yet, the last time I checked anyway. Hopefully they will be soon. But I've got a breeding colony, you know, a colony of them that's starting. It's just not doing a whole lot. But they don't seem to be dying. I just digging around in there the other day and pulled out four of them, and they looked okay. And I didn't see any dead ones. So... David P. watched the Vinegaroon video and saw this. One thing I would like to say that I'm really excited about, everybody, is that my uh, videos, I know some of you may have seen this, that a lot of my videos in the Best Pet Invertebrate series have just really taken off in the past week or two. They're doing fantastically well, and I appreciate all the support, everyone. I, this is like my videos right now are at my all-time high for views, which I really appreciate. I want to get the word out there and you know I love to educate people about critters and share my experiences both good and bad with people and um, just the fact that so many people are watching the videos is making me happy so thank you everyone for being supporters of Aquarium Max and Rochant clams need a lot of food but they live a long time yeah cool I, I want to try that sometime I think they would be an interesting thing to do try to get a green water tank and then uh, put the clams in there and see how class, fast they could clear it up and thank you make it Kate I'm glad you were able to join in and um, hopefully you'll catch the next one it's always nice when you're here and thank you Scott for joining and got to go take care of the kids totally get that so I'll catch you later and yeah I'm really glad I could answer the questions I I always appreciate you asking it keeps the live streams interesting um, 
And Brian, I, I hope you're able to find a garter breeder. It's kind of hard to find them. So yeah, I'm not too surprised. I'm lucky enough to have one within, you know, driving distance of my house and just was able to get these at the expo because, you know, the expo was less than an hour's drive from my house and less than an hour's drive from his house and just uh, set it up ahead of time. He set some aside for me, so it worked out nicely. And Oko Loco, glad that uh, your invertebrate series is really awesome. I'm glad you enjoy it. I'm, I'm having fun with it. And thanks for the like spike suggestion, Heather. Always appreciate that. Um, what do you feed your teeny snakes? Well, they do take worms. They take pinky pieces. I have to chop up the pinkies, which is not my favorite thing in the world, but I do it. They're, of course, frozen. I don't do that with the live ones. That would be awful. And uh, then I also give them reptilinks, which are made of ground, whole ground quail and a rabbit with the feathers and everything. And they seem to do really well with uh, this diet so far. And what is Mango's question that I missed? I'm, I know I'm missing some. There's a lot of questions today, so I'm missing things. How much does it cost to start breeding bristlenose plecos? Well, I would say you would want at least, at least a 20 gallon tank. It'd probably be better to go with the 40 breeder. Um, also depends, make sure you have a, something to do with them because they're not going to stop unless you separate the male from the female. Get one male and you could probably put two females in the tank and at least one of course. You need a breeding cave of some type. You can find those on Aquabid made out of clay. I have one. I've used it. Or you can just get a flower pot and uh, a low to the ground like flower pot tray and put a hole in the side of it. Or you can put a lot of driftwood that has holes and leaves things like that in there. Um, and then just put them in, you know, get the tank cycled and good to go. You can put some plants in there like some java fern, anubias, whatever, depending on the lighting. Um, Lots of plants would do fine. They will nibble on some, some of the softer plants and stuff, if they're not getting enough food especially. Uh, and then uh, just feed them well. They like um, green beans right out of the can. They like zucchini a lot, um, algae chips, things like that. Give them a lot of good food. And usually the male will entice the female into cave, lay eggs. He'll protect the, the babies for a while, the eggs and the babies, and then Pretty soon you'll have a bunch of little fish and they won't stop and you'll have more than you know what to do with. So it's pretty easy, but as far as cost goes, I mean, if you get a tank together, you know, it might be, depending on the size of the tank and whether you get it used or not, you could do it anywhere from $50 to a few hundred dollars, depending also on the kind of setup you want to do. Um, something like that, hopefully that helps. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to catch up everybody. Um, do you have any other scorpion species in mind? I'm a newer video and I'm really enjoying your channel. Well, the only scorpion species I have right now are an Asian forest scorpion and a Coahuila devil. And maybe you've already seen those and those are the ones you're talking about. Um, those are the only two scorpion species I have now. I wouldn't mind getting an emperor. And I'm really intrigued by some of the communal parthenogenic scorpions, but I don't know. Um, those are my only ones that I have now and the only immediate plans I have to have any. Uh, so... You never know. But thank you for joining in, Shadow Blazer XZ. And I hope that helps with your question. And all right. PVC with a rock in the end is a good idea too. Just weigh it down. Yes. And you, the driftwood is, is extremely helpful. I like to put uh, Malaysian driftwood in with mine. And they will chew it so much that they'll create their own caves over time. I've had that happen. That's a good point that I didn't mention. The driftwood. I've had them create caves by gnawing on the driftwood so much and then have their babies in the caves. Um, and I don't notice a huge difference um, in the male and female placos there. I just mostly focus on the, the bristles when I try to distinguish male from female. Oh, sorry, I'm totally out of focus. And what is your view on Chinese algae eaters? I know they're a pretty disliked species, just wondered what your take is. Well, I've kept one. Years ago, somebody had one and said, and this is years, years ago, I was like 13 years old, and they said, you know, this is our only fish that survived, and, and it won't die, and all our other fish die. Do you want this? And so I took it. I didn't know what I was doing at the time, because like I said, I was about 12. And had it for quite a while. I ended up giving it to someone else eventually. It got pretty big over time um, before I got rid of it, and found someone else with a huge tank. 
I think they will attack other fish on occasion for the slime coat, especially when they're hungry, which, you know, you can only do so much to keep them not hungry. Um, let's see. Uh, so I would say they're not necessarily my favorite algae eating fish because they're not going to be really great at eating algae, especially when they're bigger. And they tend to be aggressive. So, yeah. But I liked that fish while I had it. Hmm. Okay, well, maybe I misunderstood your question, Mango Juice. Did I? I mean, because other people are telling the prices. I see that uh, Mickey M paid 12 for an albino bristle nose, and Jay's Crazy Obsession paid 50 for his male, but is selling the babies for 5 to 7. I actually want to get one from him. He said I could get one from him, and I want to do that at some point. I'm just trying to decide which tank I should put it in make it work um, okay well you know what I'm looking at the clock and thinking oh I got to get working on other stuff I've got other videos I got to shoot and stuff but I really enjoyed the live stream hopefully you have too uh, stay tuned for the next video on Friday got some fun stuff coming up the next video is probably gonna have to do with isopods so we'll see how it goes for sure and I have some news about the project I'm working on with these little snakes, uh, but I can't reveal that quite yet, but I will soon. So thanks again. Thank you, Mango, for the uh, super chat. Thank you, everyone, for joining in for the likes, and have a great day. Oh, there he goes. Took a little bit of a dive, but he's fine. It was only a few inches, fortunately. Doing okay. All right. Um, last question. Flame the Crested Gecko. Hey, would you recommend morning geckos as good beginner pets? Not if you want to handle them. If you're fine with setting up a bioactive display for them and just watching them, then sure. But if uh, you'd rather have something you can handle, I would more highly recommend something like a crested gecko or maybe a leopard gecko. And that's about it, I think. I appreciate everybody joining in and have a great day.